expedition by wearing red coats instead of the infantry blue. The Corps is led today by Drum Major John Parks. Ladies and gentlemen, moving into position is the commander of troops for today's ceremony, Lieutenant Colonel Richard A. Towner, Commander, 1st Battalion, 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard. The history of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment reflects the growth and development of our nation. 52 well-earned campaign streamers, 2 valorous unit awards, 5 meritorious unit commendations, and 5 superior unit awards attest to the Old Guard's record of bravery in action and achievements during peacetime. Ladies and gentlemen, taking the reviewing stand are the hosts for today's retirement ceremony, Major General Omar J. Jones, Commanding General, United States Army Military District of Washington, and Command Sergeant Major Richard A. Woodring, Command Sergeant Major, United States Army Military District of Washington.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the advancing of the colors and remain standing for the United States National Anthem. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Jones and Command Sergeant Major Woodring are taking their position to honor today's retirees. Headquarters Department of the Army Special Orders By order of the Secretary of the Army, the following soldiers of the Department of the Army are retired. Colonel Thomas Walton, Civil Affairs. Lieutenant Colonel Leon M. Hildreth, Adjutant General. Lieutenant Colonel Timothy T. Jordan, Chemical Corps. Lieutenant Colonel David G. Schilling, Signal Corps. Lieutenant Colonel Andrew S. St. Laurent, Force Management. Lieutenant Colonel N. L. Summers, Signal Corps.
Major Pace A. Duckenfield, Military Intelligence. Major Jeremy M. Tilly, Engineers. Chief Warrant Officer 5, Carlos S. Cabello, Military Intelligence. Chief Warrant Officer 4, Marlon A. Howard, Military Intelligence. Chief Warrant Officer 4, Kevin J. Turner, Ordinance. Command Sergeant Major Moises Denjoint, Engineers. First Sergeant Scott M. Bissett, Infantry. First Sergeant Patrick J. Bowser, Military Police. First Sergeant Tykevius O. Curry, Adjutant General. First Sergeant Gus A. Jenkins, Signal Corps. First Sergeant Jack H. Wheeler, Infantry. Master Sergeant Jesus Juarez, Transportation. Sergeant First Class Christopher D. Davis, Medical Corps. Staff Sergeant Denise Hartzik, Military Intelligence. Colonel Brian J. Stokes, Aviation. We are proud to recognize these soldiers' devotion to our country, and we wish them happiness and prosperity in their well-earned retirement. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the posting of the colors. Post the colors! Staff, right, face. Please be seated.
ladies and gentlemen, Major General Jones. everybody. For the folks that are here in person, welcome to historic Joint Base Meyer-Henderson Hall. Uh, to the folks that are out there online, thank you uh, for joining us and thank you for uh, being part of this great ceremony to honor uh, the, these amazing soldiers and our, our, our retirees today. For the fellow general officers, command sergeants major, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, but most importantly the families and our retiring soldiers today, welcome. On behalf of the 40th Chief of Staff of the United States Army, General James C. McConville, uh, welcome to today's Department of the Army Retirement Ceremony. Thank you for joining us and thank you for sharing uh, this special day uh, with uh, each and every one of you and your families. I had the privilege of hosting this ceremony every month on behalf of our Chief of Staff. Um, and in the two years that I've been doing this, we have never had as many first sergeants in the group of retiring uh, soldiers before. Um, while every single retirement and every single career and every single soldier um, is special to all of us in the Army, I wanted to give a special thank you uh, to the first sergeants that are here. I learned a long time ago it is probably one of the hardest ranks in the Army, but it also one of the most important ranks in the Army. Uh, I had a, a leader tell me years ago that every system in the Army comes down to a diamond-wearing first sergeant who makes things happen as they take care of people. And when you see a good formation, you see a good company trooper battery, you know leading that formation is a good, strong first sergeant. So first sergeants, thank you. Please give me a round of applause for all the current former first sergeants who are out here today. I wish everybody could be here in person, um, but these really are unique times, uh, unique for the world, unique for the country, and unique for our Army as well. But they're also special times, and this is a special ceremony. Special for you all, the retirees, special for your family and friends, and special for the entire U.S. Army. Whether you're here in person or out online, you honor these retirees with your presence and you honor their families by being part of today's ceremony. I'd like to start by recognizing the outstanding soldiers of the 3rd Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, and the U.S. Army Band, Pershing Zone, to your front. These great soldiers represent the professionalism and the dedication of our entire Army. Over one million soldiers in uniform today, and they make this ceremony, just like everything they do every day, memorable. I'm going to spend a couple minutes today talking about selfless service. It's one of our Army values, and it's something that the soldiers that stood in front of you here today as part of this ceremony have personified throughout their careers. In fact, this group of 21 retiring leaders represents 467 years of selfless service to our nation. And collectively, you all represent over 40 years of combat experience. As selfless servants, they have spent the last 20 years, and in some cases, over 30 years, putting the welfare of the nation, the welfare of the Army, and the welfare of their subordinates before their own. To the American public, they're simply soldiers, but to us, they are family, bond by a common thread of duty, honor, and country. During the span of their careers, these professionals did everything their country asked and more. From fighting and deterring enemies, to training soldiers for combat, to deploying overseas, often multiple times. And they achieved remarkable success in everything you did. To the families, I know you are proud, proud of each and every one of them, and I can assure you that their soldiers, their peers, their leaders, and all Americans are proud as well. The esteemed journalist Tom Brokaw coined the term, quote, the greatest generation, unquote. He was referring to the men and women who grew up during the Great Depression, then went on to fight and win the Second World War. Mr. Brokaw wrote, quote, that these men and women fought not for fame and recognition, but because it was the right thing to do, unquote. And like Mr. Brokaw's greatest generation, the leaders we honored in this ceremony also served selflessly, not for fame, not for recognition, but simply because it was the right thing to do. They served, and in many cases fought, in places such as Kuwait, the Balkans, Afghanistan, and Iraq, and other places all over the world. They trained in the hills of Korea, 
the deserts of California, the swamps of Louisiana, and the snow-covered fields of Europe, all while sacrificing time with their families. And their service and our Army's commitment to our nation continues today as soldiers, just like this incredible group retiring here, are supporting efforts across the entire country to vaccinate the American population and to protect the American population from this pandemic that we are all facing today. When you ask these soldiers why, they typically stare down at their shoes, they won't make eye contact, and they humbly respond, I wanted to serve my country. I wanted to make a difference. And let me tell you what a difference each and every one of you made. These great, great leaders kept our country safe during some extremely challenging times, and their uniforms tell, the, tell their stories. The ribbons, the badges, and the patches reflect their service, their skills, and their assignments over the years. And the golden stripes, the golden stripes in their lower right sleeves reflect their combat tours of duty. The uniforms tell the story of an Army profession, of battles fought and won, of overseas missions to aid those in need, and of valor, and of sacrifice. But for every ribbon, every badge, and every combat stripe, there's a story that's not told. The story of the families who served alongside each and every one of you, who shared in your sacrifices, and provided you all the support, the strength, and the courage to accomplish what our nation asked. Our families truly are the strength of our soldiers. So on behalf of our nation, I thank the families for your unwavering support to these soldiers and to our Army. Please join me in a round of applause for all Army families. And to you all, the soldiers that are retiring today, I congratulate you on a job well done and thank you for a job well done. You stood guard and maintained the eternal vigilance that has kept this country free for 245 years. And I am honored to have served with you. You all distinguished yourselves during a career of dedicated service to our nation, and this is the last thing you want to hear in your retirement ceremony speech, but your work's not over. You're professional problem solvers and professional team builders. You exemplify the American spirit of getting things done and taking care of people. As you enter the retiree roles today, know that you are a soldier for life, and though not in uniform, I have no doubt you will continue to lead by example in your communities and continue to serve our nation. As a retired soldier, you will also continue to be a symbol of our Army and what it means to serve and to raise your right hand and swear an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States and to wear the cloth of our nation. You will always be an ambassador to our Army, for our Army, and I encourage you to also be an advocate and to encourage America's finest, our sons and daughter, daughters, to follow in your footsteps and to also serve our nation. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Army leadership and on behalf of, grateful, on behalf of a grateful nation, thank you for your many years of incredible service. God bless you. God bless your families. I wish you the very, very best moving forward. Army strong.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of the Army Song. The United States Army is honored to have presented today's special ceremony. As you exit, please continue to follow all social distancing guidelines. Thank you for attending and enjoy the rest of your day.